Hello, buddy. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I got my new friend Kevin here. And Kevin, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Connecticut. Oh, nice. But I lived a long time in California, so I guess a little you know, combination like me. Yeah. California and Connecticut. And what were you doing in, uh, for a profession? Um, at the time that I moved here, I was biomedical engineering uh, for a hospital wow. in Connecticut. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, biomedical engineering? So we repair uh, medical equipment. Uh, you know, uh, anything, anything that has to do with medical repair. My specialty was uh, hospital beds, uh, stretchers, and operating tables. Hmm. So it was, uh, um, it was an interesting job. I loved it. Probably the best job I've ever had. How'd you get into that? Um, <laughs> like um, like a, a while ago, I was working for Pitney Bowes doing mailing, working on mailing machines. Mm -hmm. And I saw the writing on the wall that um, nobody does mail anymore you mm -hmm. know they're, they're trying to stop mail so um, I started researching other jobs uh, I found a biomedical engineering online I researched it and uh, fell in love with it I thought it would be a big fit so I kind of started directing myself towards getting into that mm -hmm. and it was difficult because biomedical engineering you either have to know someone or you need the degree which I yeah. didn't have mm -hmm. I have an associate degree in computers but not in biomedical engineering so mm -hmm. um, I started by getting a job at a hospital um, as a um, monitor tech for mm -hmm. um, um, heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I, I watched that for a couple of years and then I managed mm -hmm. to get into the biomedical engineering mm -hmm. department. And so you're retired now? Fully retired now, yeah, at 59. Just turned Well, just you're lucky you retired so young, huh? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you, um, what made you decide to come to the Philippines? Like, uh, when did you start thinking about so doing it was, that? So um, I am now, I have a fiance now, but um, I married a Filipino a long time ago, and oh. uh, yeah, so um, and I have a daughter with her. And uh, is she here? No, uh, uh, unfortunately, she passed away uh, four years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, from cancer, it was a, it was tough and yeah, it was hard, but um, yeah. So I was introduced to the Philippines from her on, okay. on the culture, stuff, but we had never come here when we, the the 20 years we were married. So 20 years, long time. 20 years, yeah. So. Um, my daughter, who's 20 now, but um, after my wife passed, I figured yeah, I understand, as a memorial, yeah. we brought some ashes and, and we dropped them off here and all that, but um, that was four years ago and fell, I fell in love with it. So you've been here for four years? No, no, no. no. I, can't, I oh, visited yeah. for you to drop the ashes okay. off and then I've been here six times since, so seven times total in the last four years. And, and then uh, I met uh, my uh, Adelphi, my fiance, and uh, fell in love with her and decided to pull the trigger and move here. Well, so did you get rid of all your stuff and all that? And I did, I did, and that was... That's always the hard part. The hard part was, was selling stuff. It's a lot harder than you I know. think. Just posting it on uh, Facebook and here like, and having open houses. A lot of the stuff I gave away, some of it was deals you would not believe. I, me too. But yeah, just, just got rid of everything, sold my house uh, and sold my car and, uh, and did this. But mm. it was... It was a good year and a half that I was concentrating, watching you and Paul and a bunch of other people, um, just trying to get as much research as I as I could. Um, yeah, that, you did it right, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's good that you've been here before, so you knew what to expect. Like when I came here, I never been to the Philippines. You, I didn't know a single oh. person here. I just watched a few videos on YouTube and just left off. And fortunately for me, it all worked out. Wow. But yeah, um, and so you're here now. And so, and you're settled in, and so what are your, your thoughts about being here and everything? I, I, first of all, I love it. Like we were talking earlier, I, I, I've only been here two months now, um, that hmm. uh, I have met more friends in these two months than I've met in my entire life. I mean, other than high school. High school, you, you yeah, meet yeah. everybody. You know, and I had maybe one or two friends from high school that I would consider good friends, but that's it, you know, work, work you know you know workmates yeah. and stuff like that but yeah so but here it's like constantly just meeting new people talking to them and it's 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 different yeah it's yeah i found the same thing here i talk about that all the time is that you know it's one of the i've been all over the world and this is one place i think it's the easiest to make friends especially when you're you're making friends your own age you know from other countries other professions people that in everyday life, even if they were from your country, yep. you wouldn't normally meet them in your profession or your circle of friends. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 I, and I just find that there, it's just not, you know, in America, you go out, you go out with a, a friend of yours to a bar, a sports bar, or you do this, you do that. And just people aren't really interested in becoming like good friends with somebody. No. Not like here. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. I think one reason is because we're like a separate group, you know, the, the foreigners. 
you know, and we're from all over the world, and so we kind of cling together a little bit. And and that's true, but yeah. I'm also meeting Filipinos. Yeah. Here, yeah. So it's just like it's but yes, the yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely communities. So. Well, like we're here at a coffee shop, and like you'll sit down. You saw it, you know, a few minutes ago. You sit down at a coffee we're shop, just and talking to two people. I'm yeah. talking people on both my left and my right that I never never met right. before. And interesting people too. And you know, interesting from people. Australia yeah. So it's really good. Um, what are you doing for um, health insurance and stuff? Have you thought about that? Or are you? Yeah. So following you guys, and uh, I I uh, I, uh, I heard about uh, the health here, so I, I kind of researched it, found the hospitals that I should go to, mm -hmm. and. Uh, for the last year and a half, I've been saving a lot of money in a separate bank account that I created just for health emergencies. Mm -hmm. So I have, you know, about ten thousand. I think that would probably cover me for oh, yeah. pretty major stuff. And I also have an HSA at work, which I started dumping a lot of money into too. So I think between that and my savings, I have about fifteen thousand yeah. just for health. I'm not going to touch it unless it's a medical emergency. Yeah, I had a friend of mine who. Um had a bad motorcycle wreck, you know, several years ago. He punctured his lung, broke some ribs. Was in the hospital for like, you know, ten days. Had operation and everything. Mm -hmm. And the total bill was three grand. And yeah, so I, I yeah. think you know, uh, whatever. It's not like a major heart attack or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think well, we've got you know, there, there apparently there's some, there are a couple of good hospitals here, but apparently like in Manila, there's some really state of the art yeah. hospitals yeah. in Thailand, of course, really good hospitals, and then. You know, some, some people, you know, they just go home if they have to. Like, say they come down with cancer. I know guys, like three guys that came down with right. cancer, and they just went home because they right. still had their, their Medicaid or Medicare. Um, so you're not getting Social Security yet then, right? Not yet, not yet. But I'm in a situation because I'm widowed that the U.S. government will pay, start paying my Social Security when I turn 60, not 62. Really? Yep. As long as I don't get married before 60. So I can huh. be engaged as long as we don't get, we can get married the day after I turn 60, and then we're good. I collect, it's called widower's uh, benefit. So I get to collect hers, and I can do that for life, and I can always switch back to mine. So Interesting. It's a, it's a bad situation, but it works out for me, you know. It's a, you know but, um, I didn't know about so, that. Yeah, uh, I kind of stumbled into it. So I get to collect my wife's. And I can do that until I turn 67, where my benefit would be at the highest point, and then I can switch back to mine. Good. Now, what about uh, Medicare Part B? Are you going to keep that? Uh, I don't even have that yet, because you have to be... You but know, I mean, yeah, when you do get it, I well, will get it, yeah, yeah. Because they automatically put it on there. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I've already... Actually, I got a calendar entry to remind me to sign up and all that when it comes up, so yeah. No, see, I dumped that. I got rid of that. Oh, really? Yeah, and most of the guys do, because the thing is, it's useless over here. It is. I it's wasn't... $180 a month. That this is why I need to talk to people to find yeah. this stuff out. And so I was I was recommended by um, several of my subscribers to get rid of it. Okay. And it's much easier to do when you're back in America. Just say yeah. I don't want that. But um, here, what you had to do is um, you can call the embassy yeah. in Manila, right? And they have a Social Security office there. Mm -hmm. They're only open from like eight to ten. I only take phone calls from like eight to ten in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, I spoke to them, they emailed me some documents, I signed them, sent them back, and it took a little back and forth, but I got that taken off, and so that's $180 a month. And so that was automatically put on? Yeah, automatically. Oh, I didn't know that it was automatic. I thought that- uh, Yeah, Medicare a... Part P, they just stuck it on there. You know? Okay. But, um, <laughs> I, um, but $180 a month, you think if you just put that in the bank that's every- Substantial, yeah. Yeah, that covers if you're on prescriptions or whatever. Are you taking, right? are you taking any kind of medication? Um. I take uh, stuff for cholesterol. Okay. So like statin. Uh, uh, statin. Yeah. So I thought it was kind of high. I was at 40 milligrams a, a year and a half ago, and I started thinking I didn't know if I could get that medicine yeah. here. So you can. I started. You can. Yeah. I didn't know that, so I wasn't sure. You don't need a prescription thing. either. Really? Uh, see. Yeah. Most uh, it's, most pharmacies, if it's not an opioid, yeah. You know, like Ambien, something like that, yep. you can get it without a prescription. Some okay. some. Some pharmacies don't want to give you antibiotics, but a lot of them will. Will, okay. But all my, I take quite a few medications because of my, my heart and stuff, and yep. I've got a cardiologist giving me all these medications. And I can just go in, like I went in yesterday at Mercury Drug and had the empty boxes and said I need And that's this. all you need is the empty box. Yeah, and they gave them to me, all of them. So it makes it easier. That's, actually, that's yeah. good. That's a good thing. And then seeing it, you know, I recommend getting a doctor, um, a regular doctor, and you can, like Silliman's got some good ones there, mm -hmm. just a general practitioner. Okay. And you know, become one of their patients. They only charge you ten dollars to see them. And that's the next thing that I need to do. Yeah. I've already been the talking. The Sillman's right here. It's yeah, right yeah, around yeah. the yep. corner. Yep. Um, you do that. And you know, make an appointment there, and then 
the good thing is like some, if you come down with the flu or you know you hurt yourself or whatever you can contact your doctor and go see your doctor who knows you and gotcha. sort you out interesting okay yeah. it's good to know good to know mm -hmm. so yeah some of that planning i guess was useless but yeah so so what I started do? stockpiling a lot of medication, like you know, the smart. cholesterol yeah. stuff, because I wasn't sure if I could get it. So I have like probably a year's supply right now. Well, the <laughs> thing is, it's expensive over here too. That's the one thing I have noticed. Like, not everything's cheaper in the Philippines. Like, oh. I was on um, lisinopril, which is a blood pressure yep, medicine. Yep, I know it is. And I was paying in, at Walmart three month supply twelve dollars. Okay. And here, one month supply is is thirty bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's so it's expensive. Like it right is, now, I'm spending yeah. over a hundred dollars a month on medications. Wow. Yeah. So it's expensive over here. So yeah, if you can bring, I recommend anybody watching this, if you're on medication, bring as much as you can with you. And Yeah, and so what I did like a year ago is I, I thought 40 was kind of high, so I started cutting my pills in half, so saving half and just yeah. making it go. And then I went back to the doctor and I had it checked and everything was good at half the dosage. So he started getting mad. So after six months of already doing that, I had yeah, there's a lot of controversy about statins too. I I know I hate I hate taking medication. Yeah, if I have a headache, I will resist taking yeah. even like an ad. I, I interviewed, I not interviewed. I had a, when I was tutoring English, mm -hmm. I had a lady from Iraq who was a pharmacist who mm -hmm. had so she's such a, a good pharmacist that she was hired in California and she was getting ready to move to California to work as a pharmacist. Okay, and she said that don't take statins. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've heard a bunch of people but, say you know, the same thing. My cardiologist wants me to take them and I kind of quit taking them and so far everything's been fine. But Yeah, you get tested and all that? Yeah. yeah nice, but, nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm interested to see what my testing is right now because yeah. I feel like I'm eating better here than I did in the States. Well, they keep, apparently they keep changing the levels of what, you know, yeah, cholesterol yeah, yeah. is. And a lot of times, like, there's good and bad cholesterol, you know, yeah. and it all gets real complicated. Right. But, you know, one thing that's nice here is like, for example, I see a cardiologist once a month. Before I left America, I tried to make an appointment with my cardiologist, actually who did my surgery, and I said, yeah, six month waiting list. Yeah, it, it, just seeing a skin doctor here is much quicker. Yeah. I mean, I literally, I went just because I wanted to be checked for cancer, skin yeah, cancer. Yeah. I was like, you know, it sounds like a pretty thing, yeah. you know, that you should do at my age. And they're like eight months out, and I'm like, really? That's just amazing yeah. that it's so long in America to get a specialist like well, that. Uh, there's a couple of dermatologists here that have open, uh, what they call it, like, almost like an open house or whatever, where it's yeah. like every Wednesday from like 8 to 12, it's just walk in, first come, first serve. Yeah, I've seen and, some YouTube videos. It's yeah. like the, the most is going to be two days wait as well. Yeah, so that's anything. great. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Hmm. Um, tell me about your tattoos. Uh, so, yeah, so I got a bunch of tattoos, uh, some tribal ones. I designed most of them myself, at least up, up on my chest and stuff like that. Um, when did you get to, How old were you when you got your first tattoo? Uh, my first one? Where, where even is my first one? I think it was here, so it was in the Navy. I oh, did, you were in the Navy. Yeah, I did four years in the service, so, okay. um, so that was my first tattoo. And then I just kind of like uh, fell in love with them and I got a bunch of other ones. I designed a bunch. I didn't tat them on, but I, I designed yeah. some there. And then I like to travel a lot, so this is a travel tattoo. It's a compass mm. and all that. And then um, this was just because I just wanted something different, uh, a rose. Hmm. So I know a lot of guys get tigers and dragons, and I think those are cool too, but I just wanted it to be a little different, so hmm. I went with the rose. Maybe you get a tattoo, you should wait till you're like my age, because I see these guys who got their tattoos when they're 20, and, yeah, and it's all blue. <laughs> yeah, quite faded, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I got like a Sokatana over here and a Darth, you know, Death Star on my back. So. <laughs> I got a friend of mine, Robert, who's literally from his neck to his toes tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that's it's expensive too, isn't it's, it? It's it's not cheap. No, it's not cheap. Hmm. And, uh, you Are you planning on getting any more? No, no, that's it. You're I'm done, done. No, that's hmm. it. There's some lady here in the Philippines. She's like 100 years old. I can't. I remember seeing a YouTube video on it. She's still doing it, but she does it the old style with the hammer. And oh the, yeah, yeah. That interests me. So it, there's a possibility if I can find this place. It's somewhere in the Philippines so that mm. they do this. So. I think they do that in New Zealand too. They do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Mari like, or like whatever. Like tribal type. Yeah, the tribal thing, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, there's two questions I've started asking all my new um, guests on the show. Yep. Um, the first one is, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you your whole life? Worst thing in you ever my went whole through life? in your whole life? That was like the hardest thing to go through? The, the, the death of my wife. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. It was cancer. Uh, she was diagnosed. Uh, she passed a little over four years ago. And she was diagnosed five years before that. It was a thymoma. So it's okay. stage, stage four. It's uh, cancer here, but it had spread to her lungs, which is typical with thymomas. Hmm. Um, but the doctor gave her 
uh, 12 months to live. Jeez. Um, but she made it uh, four years. Wow. So, yeah, so uh, she was strong and we were very aggressive in how we, we went after it. But that must and have been a brutal four years going through all that and brutal. knowing that that's brutal, hanging yeah. over your head. And yeah, and, and half the year she was in a lot of pain from all the, the, you know, the radiation, the chemo, the surgeries and all that. So, But there was still you know, maybe six good months of the year hmm. where I took her and my daughter. and we tra That's when we started traveling. You know, we went hmm. to Iceland, to Ireland, Scotland, Paris, you know, Yucatan. So we started doing a lot of that to develop some memories for my daughter right. because I wanted her to have those good memories of yeah. my life. So. How do you feel about yourself? If you ever came down with the same kind of cancer, what would you do? Would you go through what oh she went through? God. I don't know. After seeing what she went through, it was terrible. I don't. She she was so strong to deal with that. So um, yeah, it's I like, don't know, I I don't my, know I, if I could go through that. Yeah. Like when I had my quadruple bypass surgery, I've said before I'd never do it again. Really, it's just not worth it. My dad said the same thing. He had yeah. a five-way, yeah, yeah. five-way bypass. Mm. But he's still alive today. Yeah, he's so good. He changed his diet. He takes his medication. He he tries to stay active. Yeah, one time is fine, but the second time is that which is you're better off not knowing what you're gonna what exactly. you've got ahead of you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. I get that question to... a lot. Would you want to know? No. No. I, yeah. I would want to know. know. Yeah. Okay. Next question. What's the best thing that's ever happened to you your whole life? And let's and leave out like children being born, because a lot of people say, well, you know, my daughter being yeah. born or whatever, but something else that happened in your life that really made a huge impact and really changed things for you. So I don't know if I can say meeting my fiance would be a good one. I mean, yeah. that's kind of in line with, with, with your I'll give you two, since you're yeah. using that, I'm, and she's sitting yeah, right here. I'm gonna, because I'm gonna her, give you two. <laughs> because of her, it helped situate moving to the Philippines and acclimating and- uh, How did you meet her? It, actually, it was uh, online Facebook. I wasn't searching oh. anything out. It was just because you know, I had my previous relatives with my wife, a lot of Philippine friends. Yeah. And you know, Facebook will sometimes just spit somebody yeah, out yeah, like, yeah. hey, you want a potential friend there? Yeah. And she just popped up and she was standing on a beach uh, in Cipolle. Yeah. And uh, I love the backdrop and she was beautiful. And I just, you know, took a chance and just reached out to her. Hmm. And uh, that's we just kind of took off after that. Pretty Almost quickly. every guy I've met here has met their um, wife, girlfriend online. It's like the future, you know? You're right, it is, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. Yeah. But I wasn't searching, I wasn't like on Tinder yeah. or any of those things, so. Yeah, yeah, because I met my wife on uh, Filipina Cuba and I was only on there for one month and I was ready to give up on the whole thing because right. I had a lot of, not, not scammers, but just girls that were, like, yeah. you could tell they were gold diggers yeah. or whatever. Yep. And so I just said, you know, forget about that. And then I met my wife. But what I did is like, we immediately switched over to Facebook Okay. And then I could see that she was a real person. She had pictures of her family and right? her house. Right, yep. that's important. And said, yeah, this is a real girl with a real yep. life. You know, it's not yep. somebody who's trying to pretend to be something they're yep. not. But And she never asked for money, which I heard is Yeah, that's yet. another, so, I mean, that's a like, big yeah, red flag. No, yeah, exactly. So there were no red flags. Everything was perfect. I came out and visited and uh, just had the best time, you know, yeah. with her. So. Yeah, before I met my wife, I was going to go out with this one girl that was a friend of a friend. And she wanted to negotiate what her... Um, allowance is going to be per oh. week, and also how much money I was going to pay her, pay her wow. parents per month. Wow. I never even had a date with her. Wow. I said, sorry, dear. Goodbye. See you later. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah sadly, there will be guys that, that will jump on that too. Yeah. Though, so so um, how about transportation? How are you getting around? So again, a year and a half ago, I started planning and saving money separate from the health stuff. So I saved enough money to buy a bike, mm -hmm. and I was able to Put away 20 grand for a car, so I now have a, a bike and a car. Oh, nice! So the car will be for um, you know going farther camping yeah. or other you know other parts of the Philippines, and the bike is for around town because getting anywhere in a car in town is it like it triples your all, time. It, it's an all-day event. Yeah, all-day all day event. event. What yeah. kind of uh, bike did you buy? I bought the Yamaha um, uh, and. Uh, uh, and Max. Oh yeah, it's a good bike. It is a good bike. Yeah, I'm really happy. I haven't. I used, I've had like four motorcycles in in my past, but I haven't ridden in about 20 years. I was a little worried. Yeah. Seeing, you know, what it's like in being out here, what the driving's like. But first day, I was really nervous. Second day, not so bad. But third day, I'm just in and out of traffic like yeah. nothing. Yeah. You just now I know my time is coming. Everywhere. I mean, you can't be in this situation where you're not going to. Just you just got to hope that it's not going to be bad. Well, you know, I don't know if that. I heard that too when I first. Cause someone said, "Well, it's not a matter of if, but when you're going to have a wreck." Yeah. I've been here four years. I've, I've fallen over them. I don't count that as a wreck. I count. I'm, I'm counting that. You know, like yeah. I, I was on a road one time, and a, a truck stopped in front of me, so I went to put my left foot down, and the road had 
drop, there was a drop off of like, you right. know, a foot. Right. And so I just toppled over. Yeah, and hurt we, my leg. We just saw a girl do that. She came around the corner and she panicked. She, we could see, I could yeah. see. She was right in front of me. She panicked, you know, and she just fell over. And then she wasn't sure if she was hurt, so she just kind of like froze there. But everyone ran up yeah. and they helped her out, and she yeah. was fine. But but I've uh, seen very few wrecks here. I mean, I haven't very, seen any other than few. that. I'm just, but I consider that yeah. as kind of a wreck. But yeah. it's, I mean, it's just things that amaze me here is like, uh, just like uh, electricians. They'll they'll put up an extension ladder in the middle of the road. Not even leaning against the telephone, but they'll lean it right on the wires and they'll climb up there and they're working on these. I'm like, okay. Or OSHA would have their heads would explode. They'll do it in the rain too. In oh, I well, you miss corner, something else you'll see here is like wires hanging down. Yes, a lot of wires hanging yeah. down. Yeah. And, and still, even like, it was really bad after the typhoon last year, but even now you'll be driving along in the right lane, all of a sudden there'll be a black wire hanging down right around neck height. Uh, I've yeah. seen that. I saw a girl right. one time actually hit one and get knocked off her bike. Right. Really. But wow, yeah. Wow. So that, yeah. and then people holding like you know oh. sharp steel, oh, and I'm yeah. like right at my neck. <laughs> dragging, they'll dra be dragging be like ten foot rebars on the back of a motorbike. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. So you need to be, yeah, be impaled with one of those. So yeah, so that's. I saw a guy uh, last year on a little moped driving along. And he's weaving all over the road. What is wrong? Is he drunk or something? And I get up to him. He's got a full grown pig hogtied hanging from his handlebars. <laughs> And the pig's alive, trying to get away, so he's just weaving all over oh the road my, oh my. with this 200-pound pig, you know. <laughs> but you see it all here. But yeah, you right. just you just got to pay attention, and you pay attention, and, and yeah. you're driving slow anyway. Like you, you rarely even I mean, get to 40 miles an hour. So it's, it's very forgiving. So it feels like you're like going down, like it's like yeah. 60 kilometers, but that's really not as fast as yeah. like you're, you're not like doing highway speeds in yeah. America. But yeah, you just pay attention, and I find it. I don't. I'm totally used to it now. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't even think about it. Yeah, and the good I'm thing is you don't have cops out there pulling it. people over left and right, your tail lights out, or you don't have a yeah. helmet, or, you know, it's like it's very laid back here. It is, it is. Now, they do have checkpoints, because one yeah. time we were going to, I think it was Dowling, yeah. and there was a checkpoint along the way, but you knew before you even got there. Everyone yeah. was stopped right before. The cops, they, the police, yeah. they were right there looking yeah. at them, but they weren't, like, going up to them. They know that they were yeah. waiting because they were not They'll just sit there waiting out. They're if they have to wait four hours, they'll wait four hours. If they are not have exactly. a registration, they don't have a li driver's license. Right. They'll just sit there. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's see, amazing. I've seen it like, you know, a hundred people waiting on the side of the road. Just said, okay, well, we'll so wait. So you'll always hot. know it's coming. You'll, yeah. you'll see them just pull over and yeah. wait, I guess. And so. when you do get there, like, they're very nice, you know. I've never, Are they? Yeah. Oh, so you've been? Oh, probably? yeah. I've been, very times have pulled me over several times. And, you know, they're very polite. And uh, uh, one time my registration was expired. And they gave me a ticket. It was like $5 you ticket. You pay right there? No, no. There's a five dollar ticket. I'd go to the city hall and pay it, and then go to the police police station, show them the the receipt, and that was it. Like they weren't they weren't mean to me. They weren't you know oh, good. That's confrontational. Good to know. Good to you know, know. they're very but I'm nice. I'm assuming you're all legal. I will be. I am legal because I'm on my. Yeah. I'm still in the 90 day grace period of using yeah. my American license. Well, they never even check those. Oh, they don't. I will be legal though. But yeah. I got yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. They, I know guys drive around with expired licenses that are like 10 years expired because they don't know where to look on a. <laughs> It's from Australia. Yeah. They don't know where the expiration date is. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, you know, they well, that's done. good to know. That's good to yeah. know. So, yeah, so the driving is, is something that's a little, takes some getting used mm -hmm. to. Now, did you have any trouble finding a place to live? No. Um, we're in uh, Kandawai right now. Mm -hmm. And actually, Paul, uh, old dog, yeah, yeah. Um, him and, and uh, his uh, uh, girlfriend, slash, I think, fiance. May. Now? Yeah, uh, May. Uh, they did a video like six months ago of this apartment complex. Oh yeah, I and, remember that. And uh, and we fell in love with it, but it was booked. So when I got closer to pulling the trigger, I emailed the lady, the the, mm -hmm. the landlord, and she said a place just opened up. So it was a month before I got here. So I said, give it to me. And then she moved in a month before I got there, which was good because just before I pulled the trigger, I came out one month before just to get one more round of bags yeah. of stuff out. Mm. So like, so Delta allows two. 50 pound checked in bags so and I had some free miles so I was like I got a weight scale on the on the bag I was at 49 pounds nope I can stuff some more socks <laughs> in this bag so I brought everything that I could so you didn't ship any ballot buying boxes or no not? I didn't and I, I looked into it it was it seemed very difficult from the east coast to do that the west coast it seemed easier but huh. I don't know why but um, I didn't know anything about that when I came here because I didn't know either I saw it I did a little bit of research but I probably mm. could have done more but since I had the free miles anyways mm. I yeah, it's real expensive it. to send things here. Like even a letter, you know, you can send a regular letter, regular mail, but it'll take months to get here. Right, and then is it really secure? Like I have a bank card expiring in a year and a half, and then can I trust that that new card's going to make it to me? I'd have it sent FedEx. 
yeah, I mean, that's what I FedEx, I'm, uh, you know, they yeah. find your place and they bring it to you, but um, don't use UPS. UPS ripped off my mother. Oh, yeah. yeah. She wanted, she was insistent on sending me a box of personal things, you know, when right. I first got here. I'd been here like six months. Right. And it's a little box, like less than a foot square. Right. And she goes down to UPS, and I, I had a P.O. box, and UPS does not send to P.O. boxes. That's uh, their policy. Yeah, yeah, no, I knew that, yeah. But they took it anyway. Really? And they charged her $500. Ooh. And it was supposed to be there in four days. Wow. It took two months. Wow. You know, and just I totally did. ripped her off. You know, this is one of those UPS yeah. stores. Right, right. And so, you know, I tell everybody, you know, if you're going to send something here, like about buying boxes, but it's not worth it for your family to send you something, you know, Christmas presents or yeah. whatever, you know. Right. Because it's just way, way expensive. It takes forever. Right. Yeah. No, like, I knew that. I knew I've that. had some. I've had two letters be sent to me, regular mail. Both of them took over two months to get here. Ah. Uh, right. I, yeah. So, and they, but they got here. They, they did got, get they here. They did. Okay. Well, that's they good. They got to here. Know. And they good were both know. credit cards. But they were FedEx. No. Uh, no regular I, mail. Regular mail. Two really? months. Yeah. Wow. FedEx will get there. The UPS mail, and they hand it off here when it got here. Well, I had a post office box, oh, and the way it works here with the post office box is like in, you would get one in Valencia probably. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, they'll text you, you got a letter, oh, nice. and you just good go there know. and pick it up. You know, good and, to know. Good so that's know. a good way to do it. You know, and you will get it. You know, but it's going to take some time. Would you and trust something like a bank card that way? That's what I did. I had two, really? Yeah, I've got both of them. Yeah, nice. I got both. Oh, of them. that's good to know. Yeah, that's good to know. it's now, better I, probably if they wrap it in like some kind of you know, so yeah. it's not obvious what it obvious is. Obviously, what it is. Yeah. 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 Right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. I kind of plan that out. So I have one bank card that's expiring about a year and a half, but I have two other banks that I, I called the bank and I said, I want, it's, it's a year away, but can I get the, yeah, yeah. and I got, so I, those that's are That's a smart thing out, to do, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so in the planning stage of that, I also got, I made sure that I had three bank accounts, Charles Schwab, Capital, Very 360, good. and Ally. Yeah. I could transfer between all Very of them. Good. I set up a traveling mailbox which was good. I'm still well, tell me that. about that a little bit, the traveling mailbox. Tell me about that. So th that's the, that's the name of it is traveling bag, the one that I use. They have all names, but the one I got is traveling mailbox. So I pay uh, a monthly service, which is low, and included in that is all my mail goes there. So that's like my mailing address. So what I did is I called my banks up and I gave them, banks now have two addresses, your mailing address and then your permanent address. Okay. So my permanent address is my mother's house. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's, that's my permit. Yeah. So they, they, they believe I'm still living there, which mm. actually I kind of yeah, am. I have Charles, some furniture. Charles there. Schwab like requires that. Yeah. Yep. So and in all honesty, I'm not super lying because my I still have some stuff there. So yeah. if I ever go back, so I am living there. And then the mailing address is all my physical mail goes to the traveling mailbox. What happens to it though? Well, then they send me a message. Hey, you just got you just got a letter. So then I can go open the app and I can look at it. And then I have a bunch of options. I, do I want to open it and scan it? And then if I see some documents that that I like. I will say, then send me a, a scanned PDF of those, which they'll do. I can delete it and shred it, or I can put it in a separate mailbox to look at you later, or I can actually forward it. Another option is that um, I can also send it to one of my banks to be deposited without a signature. I don't know how this worked, but I tested it out before I left. I wasn't, I didn't wow. leave anything to chance, so I sent myself to yeah. that traveling mailbox, uh, $50. I, it went there, and then I sent it to Capital One, and sure enough, it deposited in, so it, it does huh. work. So if I get any lingering checks that are, you know, like utility bills mm -hmm. and things like that, which actually I already did. But I you can't use that mailbox as an address. Not, well you can, but some banks I heard are, are, are on to it. So they, they know that all the traveling mailbox across, but which ones are a traveling mm -hmm. mailbox. So then they're like, wait a minute. I was wondering how that worked, like people that, are, like before I moved here, I was looking into the van life. Mm -hmm. I live in a mobile home and uh, travel around yeah, the country yeah. and stuff. Yep. And I said, well, how do you do that? Well, like if you get a driver's license and you don't have a permanent address, you know, like do so, that. Supposedly you can use it as a permanent address. Maybe a driver's license is a good deal. And, and you can use it for a bank, but I've heard that some banks, and I didn't want to take the chance of the bank catching on. And, yeah. Oh wait, this, this, it's in South Carolina. Is That's a traveling mailbox. You need to prove to us that you're, you actually live here. I didn't want that option, so. Like I Yo, said. Charles Schwab, they sent me an email just a couple weeks Did ago. They? Uh, I think said, I well, saw that you do a video on that. Yeah, they said, well, all your, uh, we've seen all this activity in the Philippines you mm -hmm. know, for the last three and a half years. Um, can you confirm your address? And so I just called them up and said, and yeah, that it. I still have this address, gave my mother's address, I'm still using that. So they're just looking for that. Yeah, and did, they said, was, okay. Did they, they, didn't, they didn't like quiz me like, well, are you living there? Like they didn't do nothing so like that. So you gave your mother's address at that time, but no, was it, it, they had it before. They already had, but, yeah, but they were still it. wanted to exactly. hear you confirm it. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Good to know. And then I've got um, 
Magic Jack, which is really good because yes, I've, I've got heard about that. an American phone number. Like yeah. I, I used to live in Utah, so right? you can pick your area code. So I picked a 435 area code. Okay. And so okay. on my cell phone now, well, I can call my mother, call yeah. anybody, just as if I'm in America. And they can call me as if so I'm in is, America. Um, is, is Magic Jack cost money? or? Yeah, it's very cheap, though. It's, I got it on one of my credit cards, like automatically. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, okay. I think it's like seven dollars a month gotcha. or less than that. So what I did is I went, I got Google Voice, yeah. which is a free service, but it's Wi-Fi only. But they give you a number, so I now have a separate yeah. number, and that's my emergency backup for like banking. If they, yeah. you know, if you're going to log in, I tested it out before I left. It works fine, and it works here. Yeah. But that's free, and it's only Wi-Fi. So then I also signed up for Google Fi, which is a paid service, and they Google Fi is. Um, they use, I think, T-Mobile and somebody else, and then they also have deals with the Philippines and other countries. Oh. So it's, uh, I think it's $60 a month that I pay, unlimited usage in foreign countries and living there, and it works perfect. I, in fact, I have better service with Google Fi than with the SIM card phone that I have. Really? The local one, yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting information. Yeah, yeah. so and it's, it's unlimited, and it, it works flawlessly, and I, I ported my original number of so they, Everyone so you can call I, uh, Philippine phone numbers and everything? Yep, yep, I call them from that, yeah. Yep. Wow. And then anyone that's calling me from the States, they just call my regular number and it comes over here. Wow. So it works It works well. It's a little expensive, I thought, $60, but it was worth it to keep my old number. Oh my God, just trying to change that with yeah. all my banks and everything, so. So when I moved here, I was using T-Mobile and I was paying well over $200 a month. Well yeah, over. AT&T, $200. Yeah. I'm like, oh, two, the thing with AT&T is like you never knew. Like I do do nothing different, but like one month it's one ninety five, next month two seventy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I didn't do anything different. Well, you were in this area. Yeah, AT and T, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh they man. Always change a little bit here and there, and they'd up the rates. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I was I not happy since I was tutoring it. online, I needed that hotspot in case I didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. And then someone said, "Well, just you know, get a SIM card. How, what's that? I didn't know what it was. You know, so they took me down yeah. to the mall, like four bucks." get a SIM card and yeah. it's like nothing to top up your phone here. No, like nothing, nothing. And then I, now it's like I don't spend even $10 a month on a phone. Do you pay phone. monthly? Do you have a monthly no, service plan? No, I just, plan? I just top up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm still learning that uh, the pound, one, two, three yeah, star, so and then you can kind of You like can go anywhere, 7-Eleven, any little right? sorry, sorry store, you can walk in and, and just say, I want to give them your phone number, give them 500 pesos, which yep. is $10, and boom, your phone's topped up. Topped you can up. choose your plan, what yep. you want. Nice, yeah. But once you get used to it, it's easy, you know. So yeah, I've got all that figured out. Nice, nice, nice. I got that. I just signed up for GCash. Seems to work pretty good. Yeah. No, oh, you got everything figured out, don't you? Uh, You're a wealth I'm of knowledge for a I'm new trying, guy. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning all kinds of stuff. I've been here four years. You know more than I do. You know why? Because I, I just, I religiously followed you, Paul, and a. And a and you a didn't find shit out for me. No, no, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, there was a lot. It's not for me. Stuff. From guys I have on my show. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, just a disclaimer here, I'm not, an, I'm not a, an expert on anything, guys. I, I say it all the time, like, don't ask. I get emails, hey, Mark, what about Visa? What about banks? What about sending money? All this stuff. No, don't, I'm the wrong guy to ask. Yeah. Don't ask me. I don't know. I yeah, figured out. Yeah, in today's out. world, you don't want to give out too much advice. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I'm not an you advice guy. I'm an interview yeah. guy. Well, anyway, yeah, can, you, watching all you guys really helped out a huge amount. Well, you know, thank you so much for your time, and uh, thanks for sharing all this information. Absolutely. It's really, really useful, and uh, nice getting to know you. I hope to see you around. Uh, yeah, same here. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you next time. Bye.